don't you become to be a, a, a certified master coach? Now, what does that mean? What is a master coach? What do you, are you a master of coaching? Do you coach masters? What is a master coach? Well, you know, the schools that you go to create their own designations. Right. I have a CPC, Certified Professional Coach, Certified Master Coach, and I think they do it to sound impressive. Quite honestly, none of my clients ever at any time have ever asked anything about where I went to coaching school or my coaching credentials. So it's something you have that doesn't matter unless it matters to somebody, but what really matters is can you connect with people and help them do the things they want to do? That's what they're looking for. Hmm. So where exactly did you get certified? Like talk to me about that process. I, I like, I like that you said it doesn't matter. Cause that seems incredibly honest that I don't think my life coach would actually admit that it really doesn't matter. But I am curious as to the whole process, you know, how long it takes, like who exact, who certifies you? It's not the state, like who exactly no. certifies you? So how, how are they certified to certify you? They're not. Uh, the International Coaching Federation is as close to the get, it gets as a sort of recognized body, but they have no authority in any state or country. They are a self-appointed, self-regulating body, and there are a number of others who aren't quite as big as the ICF. Uh, most coaching schools will uh, have curriculum that they run by the ICF to, to meet that because they want to say their material is approved by the ICF, but nobody has any authority. Nobody, uh, yeah, anyone, you, anyone can go out and hang out a shingle and call themselves a life coach, dating right. coach, relationship coach, your mama, whatever they want. So what you do to get certification is you go, you look around, this is what I did after my departure from, which we'll probably get to, but after I left 30 years of the, the career that I had, I asked myself, what do I know how to do? And the answer was, I know how to help people do things they don't believe they can do. Cause that was what I'd been hired as a high powered consultant to do. And I said, Hmm, what is that? I think that's coaching. Let's do that. So I did some internet research and found uh, several different coaching school certification programs and talked to some of them and found somebody that made sense to me that I liked and they had a mix of in-person and online stuff. So I enrolled in the program and that was the CPC, Certified Professional Coach. That took a year. And then after that, they offered a more advanced Certified Master Coach kind of thing, which was additional training and some supervised coaching practice and stuff. So it would, it's about like you'd expect it to be. All right. They train you with some stuff and then they supervise you doing some coaching and they then they take a wand and ding, stamp you in the forehead approved. So, so does, does it come a lot to like, I guess, personal philosophy? So when you, when you're going through this process, it's not like there's someone else out there who teaches exactly what you do. It's not necessarily a curriculum. It's kind of like a guidance to find your own way to then teach others. So is that, am I right or wrong there? Well, you're, you're partly right. Coaching I'll, I'll take is partly right. <laughs> you're 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 eighty percent right. Here's the interesting thing: the International Coaching Federation and some others, they have a sort of a very strict idea that coaching is never telling a client what they need to do, right. and they they take that to the extreme of not even suggesting. I find as having been a very, very well-paid consultant that there's a, there's a boundary. When you get hired as a consultant, you're supposed to know the answer. You better come in and you better, they pay you a boatload of cash and you better fix this problem. Right. As a coach, it's just like an athletic coach or a drama coach or a singing coach. You're not going to do their push-ups. You can't fix the problem. Right. And, but it is not very helpful to just keep asking them insightful questions until they finally get to, you know, the answer, your experience is valuable in terms of suggesting options and helping them see, you know, opportunities in their own reasoning. When they say something that sounds like, you know, maybe that, maybe you can pursue that. So I, I don't uh, take a complete hands-off approach. A lot of people hire me because 
I have done a lot of video and I've done performance coaching and I'm a singer. They don't hire, I mean, I have taught vocal lessons, but they hire me because I know how to perform. So in addition to coaching them to do the work, they also hope that I'm going to give them performance or speaking instruction and stuff right. like that. It's kind of a mix. And that's the end of the clip. I hope you learned something. I know I sure did. Kellen was a great speaker. Had a fun time talking to him. If you want to get the full uh, full podcast, link is in the description down below. You know where it is by now. Uh, hit, hit the subscribe button, you know, all that fun stuff. Uh, if you're like Kellen and you're a life coach and want to talk to me and be a guest on this podcast, email me, will at APSpodcast.com. Love to talk to you and get you some philosophy. I actually like doing these podcasts because I end up talking about myself a lot, which is always fun to do. Um, it's very philosophical. And I like talking philosophy. So yeah, hit me up.